Hey guys, it's Venom coming at you with another build video. Today we're going to be talking about the sort tank. We're going to go over some different skills and gear combinations that you can run in both four player and trial content. Let's take a look at our skills. One of the main skills to run your sort tank is Dark Dill. This is going to give you a heal, stamina back, and stand recovery. It's also going to proc one of your passives, giving you an additional heal on top of it. So you bargain with darkness to restore 8,160 health and 3,600 stamina instantly and an additional 2,400 stamina over 10 seconds. Pierce Armor, this is from the Sword and Board skill line. This does a little bit of physical damage. It taunts the enemy to attack you for 15 seconds. It inflicts minor and major breach to the enemy, reducing their physical and spell resistances by 2,974 and 5,948 for 15 seconds. Inner Fire, this is your range taunt. This deals a little bit of flame damage and taunts them to attack you for 15 seconds. I run two taunts on my front bar. One is for a ranged Magicka cost taunt and the other is up close stamina. So Inner Fire taunts for 15 seconds. Up to three allies targeting the enemy can activate the Radiant Synergy dealing 3,282 flame damage to them over three seconds and additional 5,471 flame damage to them and other nearby enemies. Defensive stance is from the sword and board skill line. Bolster your defenses, gaining a damage shield that absorbs up to 14,400 non-damage over six seconds. The portion of this ability scales off your max health. You reflect the next harmful direct damage projectile cast at you once per cast. While slotted, you have a shield equipped, the amount of damage you can block is increased by 10%, and the cost of blocking is reduced by 10%. If you use this skill right here right, depending on what it is that's shooting at you with a projectile, you can reflect back hundreds of thousands of damage. There are certain like dragons or lurchers that have these really high damage projectiles. You just want to time this right. You can deal a lot of damage as your tank. And it's great for defense in general, but you can use it as a damage skill. The Clan Fear is one of the best heals that any of the classes have for a tank. Command the powers of Oblivion to send the Daedra Clan Fear to fight at your side. The Clan Fear's headbutt deals physical damage while its tail spike hits nearby enemies for physical damage after one second. Once summoned, you can activate the Clan Fear's special ability for magic, healing you for 15,000. 182 and the clan for 7,590. Spell walls from the sword and board skill line reinforce your shield, allowing you to automatically block all attacks at no cost and reflect all projectiles cast at you for seven seconds. If you ever have anybody on your team that's dead and you need to try to get them up, you can cast this skill here and it will automatically block for you while you do a revive. On the back bar, we have Shattering Spines. This is what's going to be able to root your enemies. It also procs your dark magic skill as well. Call forth Daedric Shards from the Earth to encase and immobilize all enemies in front of you for four seconds. After the effect ends, the shards shatter, dealing 4,766 magic damage to all enemies that was encased. Enemies are afflicted with major maim, reducing their damage done 10% for 10 seconds. Blockade of Frost is from the Destruction Staff skill line. Slam down your staff to create an ice barrier in front of you, dealing 677 frost damage to enemies in the target area every one second, and applying safeguard for six seconds to you and nearby allies that absorbs 11,677 damage from projectiles. Chilled enemies are afflicted with minor breach, and their movement speed is reduced 40% for four seconds. Silver Leash is from the Fighter's Guild skill line. You fire a Dawn Guard's crossbow hook to pull an enemy to you, dealing 3,986 physical damage, taunting them for 15 seconds. If they are not already taunted and reducing their movement speed 30% for 4 seconds. Leashing Burst is one of the new scribing skills. This is under Soul Magic. Unleash a powerful burst of Soul Magic around you. After 2 seconds, pull enemies within 8 meters to you. It heals you for 4,055 health over 10 seconds. Afflicts enemies with minor breach for 20 seconds, reducing their physical and spell resistance by 2,974. Back bar ultimate, I use aggressive warhorn. Sound a warhorn to rally your forces, increasing you and your group's max magicka and max stamina 10% for 30 seconds. 
You and your allies gain major force, increasing your critical damage by 20% for 10 seconds. You want to make sure that you grab all your passes for all your class skills. Underneath Dark Magic, there are some other skills in here that you can run as well. Suppression Field is good for utilitarian purposes. If you want to shut down like a group of ads and stuff, there are certain content uh, in dungeons especially that this could be very useful for, for just controlling the battlefield. Basically, you would just cast this out to an area and everything just freezes for like 12 seconds. The Charged Atro is also another ultimate that you can run in the group, especially if you wanted to add Major Berserk to the group for 10 seconds, increasing their damage done by 10%. So this is another way you can buff your group, though I will typically run Aggressive Warhorn, but you can run the Charged Atro if you'd rather do that. Bound Aegis is another good skill that you can run. This will increase your block mitigation by 40% for 5 seconds whenever you cast it. While slotted on either bar, your max magic has increased 8% and you gain minor resolve and minor protection, increasing your physical and spell resistance by 2,974 and reducing your damage taken by 5%. Underneath Storm Calling, there are some good skills in here that you can run as well. If you need to move around a little bit faster, you can put on Balance Storm or Hurricane Morph. Streak is a utilitarian skill that you can use in certain situations if you need to move fast or if you want to skip through certain mechanics, you can use Streak to do so. Underneath the Destruction Staff, Crush and Shock can be used if you need to add a ranged interrupt into your group. This is a good choice to do so. Enemies hit while casting or interrupted, set off balance and stun for three seconds. I have all the passes for the Undaunted. On this particular character, I am a High Elf. A High Elf can actually make a really good tank. But if you want to use a different race, that's perfectly fine. If you want to add more resistances to your character, you can also run the Nord, which is also a really good choice, especially for tanking. But for the High Elf, Spell Recharge, when you activate an ability, you restore 625 Magicka or Stamina based on whichever is lowest. This can occur every six seconds. While you're using an ability with a channel or cast time, you take 5% less damage. We are a Magicka tank, so the 2000 Max Magicka is also really useful. And the Elemental Talent increases your weapon and spell damage by 258. Let's take a look at our Champion Tree. For the Blue Tree, I have Ironclad, which reduces your damage taken from direct damage attacks by a total of 6%. During Resolve, this reduces your damage taken from damage over time by a total of 6%. Duelist Rebuff reduces your damage taken from single target attacks by a total of 6%. Endless Endurance increases your max stamina by a total of 1300. Take a look at the red tree. I have Strategic Reserve. You gain 30 health recovery for every 10 ultimate that you have. Bracing Anchor while in combat increases the amount of damage you can block by 4% per stage, but it reduces all movement speed by 16% at all stages. Total block mitigation is 20%. Fortified gives 1731 armor, balanced vitality, 1400 health. For the green tree, treasure hunter increased the quality of items you find in treasure chests. This does affect the drop chance. If you're looking for gear sets and dungeons, trials, whatever, this will help you get your pieces from those treasure chests. Rationer increases the duration of your food and drink bus by a total of 30 minutes. Meticulous Disassembly gives you back more resources when you break stuff down. Steed's Blessing increases your out of combat movement speed by a total of 20%. Alright, let's take a look at some of our different gear combinations. The first set, we have Lucent Echoes. This drops in a new trial, Lucent Citadel. This is the perfected version. The two piece adds 4% healing taken. Three piece Minor Aegis at all times reduces your damage taken from dungeon, trial, and arena monsters by 5%. Four piece Max Health. Perfected version gives an additional line of max health. While you have more than 50% health, the critical damage or critical healing of any group members not wearing Lucent Echoes increases by 11%. While you have 50% less health, reduce your damage taken from monsters by 20%. I have Lucent Echoes for the shield. On the back bar, we are running Turning Tide. The two-piece gives max health, the three-piece max stamina, four-piece max health. When you block, you gain flowing water for 10 seconds, causing your next bash attack to deal 6,463 magic damage 
to up to six enemies in a 5 by 10 meter line and apply major vulnerability for 10 seconds, increasing her damage taken 10%. This effect can occur once every 15 seconds and scales off of your max health. For the monster set, and I do swap these out, I have different combinations that I run depending on what I'm doing. On this particular build right now, I have Mighty Chewed On. The one piece gives 1487 armor, two piece 1206 max health, and you gain major resolve at all times, increasing your physical and spell resistance by 5948. For the mythic, we have Bloodlord's Embrace. Dealing damage with a bash attack places a persistent, uncleansable blood curse on an enemy. You can have up to one blood cursed enemy at a time, and dealing additional bash damage moves the blood curse. When you block a blood cursed enemy, you restore 1,605 magicka to you. This effect can occur once every one second. So when you use this in combination with your dark deal, which costs magicka to do, it gives you back stamina and gives you a heal. And then blood lords, anytime that whenever you have this blood curse on an enemy, it gives you back 1,605 magicka. So you can basically just sit here with endless resources generating your magicka back and then using Dark Deal to give you back your stamina, you can permanently block with a sort tank, but you need to make sure that when you're weaving your Dark Deal, you know the mechanics. You don't want to weave Dark Deal when a heavy attack is coming in because it will make your block drop while you're casting that skill with its cast time. So just make sure you don't cast it at the wrong time. For the waste, we have a trainee. The trainee adds 1,454 max health. Lucent echoes for the hands, legs, and feet. On the back bars are turning time. We have protective traits with reduced magic cost a spell glyph. Our character sheet for this particular build is 38,240 spell and physical resistances. We have 46,000 health, 23,901 max magica. 19,549 stam. Health recovery is 3,361. We have 42 points in the max magica underneath the attributes with 22 in, in the health. I'm running Bewitched Sugar Skulls for the food. Increase the max health by 3,937. Max stamina and magica by 3,622. And health recovery by 393. We have on the Lady Mundus Stone. This increases your spell and physical resistances by 2,744. So you might have noticed that my physical and spell resistances are pretty high on the front bar. When you go over to your back bar, they drop down to 34,607. You say, well, it's 33 for the cap. Well, it is. Whenever I go to my back bar, I don't want to be below 33. And I'm taking into account if the character gets debuffed. On this particular build, if you wanted to even out your front bar resistances, you should have infused traits for the sword and board. But I have defending currently on this. If I wanted to swap out my monster set, for example, if I wanted to put on none attack, Then that drops my resistances down to 32,292 on the front bar. But if I go over to the back bar, I'm down to 28,659. I've taken that into account. If I want to raise my resistances back up on the back bar, now I'm at 33,939. So I'm no longer weak on the back bar. I use the defensive pot to raise my resistances back up. Then back on the front bar, I'm back up to 37. So that's why this particular build is dialed in as such. All right, guys, let's take a look at some of our other gear set combinations I like to run. This is especially good for four-player content. For the sword and board, we have infused traits for turning time. On the back bar is Olorami with a crusher glyph to reduce the target's physical and spell resistances by 2,108. This is an infused trait. The two-piece provides 129 mag recovery. Three-piece Minor Aegis at all times, reducing your damage taken from Dungeon, Trial, and Arena Monsters, 5%. Four-piece provides 129 mag recovery. The five-piece casting abilities leave an effect on the ground in combat will create a circle of might for five seconds. You and your group members in the circle gain major courage for 20 seconds. 
increasing your weapon and spell damage by 430 for 20 seconds. This can occur once every 10 seconds. So whenever you cast an area of effect ability, it leaves a gold circle. You do not have to stand in the circle. All you have to do is just touch it. And then you have major courage, increasing your weapon and spell damage by 430 for 20 seconds. So this is on our back bar. So we have Cheat On for the monster set, Blood Lords for the mythic, Trainee for the waste, Turning Time for the hands, legs, and feet. And then on the back bar is Protective Trait, Reduced Magic Cause Cliff for Olorami. Let's take a look at our character sheet for this particular build. This is the front bar. And this is our back bar. All right, let's take a look at our next build. On the front bar, we have Crimson Oath. Infused Traits are the Sword and Shield. The back bar is Turning Tide. Crimson Oath provides 2-piece, 1487 armor, 3-piece, 1206 max health, 4-piece, 1487 armor, 5-piece while you're in combat, casting ability, drinking a potion, or using a poison that applies a major or minor buff to yourself or an ally, sends out a wave of energy that reduces the armor of nearby enemies within 12 meters by 3,541 for 15 seconds. This in effect can occur once every 12 seconds and will only occur if an enemy is within range. So we have Crimson Oath for the hands, legs, and feet. And then on the back bar is Turning Tide Protective Trait with Reduced Magicka Cost Glyphs. You can swap out your monster set if you choose to do so. Again, I would recommend raising your resistances. Just change out your pieces from the sturdy to reinforced. And then you can swap out your monster set. Other good sets, like I was saying, is Tremor, Skill, and Nun Attack. I will often swap these out. Let's take a look at these while we're here. The Nun Attack adds 1487 armor. For the one piece, the two piece on dealing frost damage create a six meter area under the target for six seconds, dealing 561 frost damage to enemies every one second and applying a 40% snare for four seconds. Enemies damaged four times become immobilized and afflicted with major brittle for four seconds, causing the target to take 20% increased critical damage. This effect can occur once every 15 seconds and scales off the higher of your weapon and spell damage. Tremor Scale is another set that I like to run. The one piece adds 1096 max stamina. Two piece, when you activate a taunt ability on an enemy, you cause a dune ripper to burst from the ground beneath them after one second, dealing 7,688 physical damage to all enemies within four meters and reducing their armor by 2,875 for 15 seconds. This effect can occur once every 10 seconds and scales off the higher your physical and spell resistance. Again, there's a whole bunch of different combinations that you can put together to run for different gear, monster sets, etc. You just want to make sure that whenever you do change stuff up that you take into account your resistances. So you may have to change from sturdy to reinforced, etc. Right, let's take a look at our turning and crimson combination. This is our front bar. We got over 48,000 max health. Spell and physical resistances is 35,948 on the front bar. On the back bar, we have 32,741 spell and physical resistances. We are running the Lord Mundus Stone on this particular build. All right, let's have a look at another build. Leeching for the sword and board. This is a good way if you're ever in a group and... The healers are not really doing too hot. <laughs> or if you're just needing the extra heals yourself. When you take damage, you summon a cloud of leeching poison under the assailant. The cloud deals 1,249 poison damage every one second for five seconds. And it heals you for 102% of the damage called. This effect can occur once every five seconds and scales off of your max health. The back bar is turning tide infused. We have Mighty Chewed On for the head and shoulders, Blood Lords, Trainee, and then Leeching for the hands, legs, and feet. Back bar, Turning Tide, Protective Trait, Reduce Magic of Glyphs. Let's take a look at the character sheet here. 
Again, we got 35,718 spell and physical resistances, over 46,000 max health. We're running the Lady Munda Stone on this. On the back bar, we're looking at 33,988 spell and physical resistances. Okay, guys, we're going to take a look at one more build. This is if all else fails. You're ever in a group and people are just dead constantly and you need to get them up as fast as possible. On the back bar, Kagernax Hope. Two-piece gives max magicka, three-piece max recovery, four-piece max health. It's a double five-piece, gives 222 weapon and spell damage. Decrease the time it takes to resurrect an ally by 25%. When you successfully resurrect an ally, you restore 1,720 magicka. If you put this on in combination with Spirit Mastery in your red tree, you can get people up in a hurry. I've had to use this before whenever I'm doing pugs. I'm going through really hard content, and I don't want to just have to bash the boss to death forever. I want the people to enjoy the content, so I'm going to get them up. So what you want to do with this is just cast your ultimate on the front bar, your spell wall, which is going to automatically block for you, and then go to your back bar, and then use your revive, and you can revive people super fast with this build. It can help you get through some really, really hard content. This is the character sheet for it. Again, we're at 35,718 spell and physical resistances. Over 45,000 max health. The Monday Stone on it is the Lady. A whole bunch of other gear combinations, guys. We could go on with builds forever. If you all want to run stuff like Alkosh or Pearlescent Ward or whatever, there's the list goes on and on and on. But these are some of the sets that I like to run. And I just wanted to share these with you guys. Anyway, I hope you all enjoy the video. If you do, please like, follow, and subscribe. And I'll try to get back to you all with another one. Have a good one.